Okie dokie. Let me grab my lapel mic here. All right. There we go. No one on the internet or YouTube has made a video like this before, and it should have been made already, but certainly sure the hell has not. Um, specifically talking about 300, 400, 500, 600 millimeter primes, specifically the 300 millimeter 2.8, 400 millimeter F4, 500 and 600 millimeter F4. Um, to put things really, really simply, let's talk about the AFD, the AFI version, the AFS version, which this is, the 300 millimeter AFS, and I also have I got three different versions. I've owned every version of the 300mm 2.8 and also the VR1, VR2. I actually have the most uh, recent version of the VR lens of the 300mm 2.8. You'll actually notice on the AFS version we actually have a very matte, dull, crinkle finish on this one. Let me take this uh, goofy lens hood off. These are always the lenses, by the way, that you should get insured. Because <laughs> once the front element goes, the lens is a pile of poo. Um, specifically, where to spend your money. Um, interestingly enough, on the 300 millimeter lens, actually it's not interesting, it's perfectly plausible. They actually have kept the optical formula the same, slight tweaks, including now a fluoride element to make the lens more lightweight. Well, it will be on the 300 millimeter, they already have that on the 600. But as so far as the optics, like, which one has the best image quality? This is one of the only Nikkors that I can think of where you can say, it doesn't matter, they're all just awesome. They've kept it the same. So even the really old, and I have that lens, 300mm 2.8 AIS manual focus lens, is as excellent an image output as is the current um, VR1, VR2 versions, because I have all those 300mm lenses. But specifically, which ones to avoid? Point number one, always avoid the AFI versions. Why? You'll actually notice, and I have an image up on my uh, Instagram, uh, no, actually on my Flickr page and Instagram, showing you uh, what the AFI versions look like. These are actually AF on buttons actually set at uh, 90 degree intervals around the lens. On the AFI versions, these are deeply recessed by about a half an inch. It looks completely different. That is the version before the AFS. AFS stands for Silent Wave Motor. This one actually has a true ring ultrasonic in it. Not only are the AFI lenses slow, but there's no damn parts for them. And when they break, you're just poop out of luck. You're just poop out of luck. You see them all the time, and they should be avoided at all. Well, I found a great deal. I know, avoid it. No, no, I found one that's like free. Now, <laughs> don't, don't buy it. <laughs> just one second, you, don't, don't buy it. Do not buy an AFI version. If you own one, then you're just rolling the dice. Once it goes, it goes. And it's, it's slow and it's noisy. Actually, and this is a fact, one of the main reasons people switched to Canon ages ago is that Nikon screwed the pooch and it came out with the AFI version of their professional sports optics. 400 millimeter, 500 millimeter, um, uh, yeah, and of course the 300 millimeter specifically, most importantly so, the sidelines, uh, football, basketball game. No, 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 that lens sucks. The, why is the AFS best value too, by the way? VR1 and VR2, well, the 300 millimeter is easily hand holdable. Well, it's actually still a heavy, obnoxious beast. Specifically the AFS version, and the AFS version are the most heavy, but they're also the most durable and they're the best made of all the uh, super prime telephoto lenses from Nikon in 300, 400, 500, 600. And by the way, just recently, and it's being shipped to me right now, the one lens that I've desired most and basically the only Nikon lens that I want in the world is being shipped. And it's, it's over three times the size of this lens. It's about this big. <laughs> it's the 600 millimeter F4. It's the AFS version. Yes, folks, I have now the proud ownership. I borrowed the money to buy that lens. I found one on such a steal I couldn't pass it up. And it's about this big without the lens hood. Mm, yeah. Um, anyway, why is the AFS the best version? It does have no VR, which is important for a 300 and barely so on a 400. But on a 600 millimeter, why am I not concerned? Well, a new 600 millimeter F4, for example, is thirteen thousand dollars. That's wonderful. You got nice VR, and it is three pounds lighter. The 600 millimeter F4 AFS that I bought is uh, what was it? Uh, Fourteen pounds. And uh, the uh, new uh, VR, uh, which are all silent wave motors. The important thing, too, to consider, yeah, my lens is uh, basically 14 pounds. And the new version, the VR version, and the 600 is uh, 3 pounds plus lighter than that. 
But specifically, these lenses were produced between whether it's an AFS version 1 like this is or version 2, you're talking about 1996 to 2004. They have low manufacturing numbers and Nikon did not make a ton of those lenses, but they're also the best made. But importantly, the autofocus is just as fast on these as it is the modern lenses, the VR1 and VR2. All of these lenses, whether it's this lens, well, that's an old lens, it doesn't have VR. It's still a silent wave motor lens, well, VR, which is why I have a VR version of the 300 millimeter, the most recent version, which is more lightweight, is more streamlined, it has a couple more switches on the side. Isn't that wonderful? Same optics. Um, on a 300, you're not getting anything optically superior by buying a newer one. These make wonderful portrait lenses, the actual background compression you get. People say, well, lens compression doesn't exist. Well, actually, if you frame your subject the same, lens compression does exist. This is where we enter the measure baiters. You say, well, technically, lens compression doesn't exist. This well, technically, the way photographers work, lens compression absolutely 1,000% does exist. And I made in a, a very intelligent, I might be proud to say myself, video on this fact. But anyway, the AFS version is absolutely the best one to get. The AFD, let's go down like on the uh, four classes of, uh, of, uh, of uh, lenses on 300, 400, 500, and 600. And by the way, 400, 500, and 600 do not have AFD versions. AFD is a screw drive lens. It actually is mechanically driven uh, via the mech motor and the camera to actually autofocus that. Now that 300 millimeter f2 averages like $1,000 used in uh, good working shape. Y you, you don't want it. I mean, the autofocus is really, really slow. I mean, for portraiture, that's perfectly fine. If someone wanted something in portraiture on the cheap, that's great. But that's you, you want to avoid that, but that's not an issue because that lens does not exist in 400, 500, 600 millimeter or 4 versions. But in the 300 millimeter 2.8, it does exist. And prior to that, of course, is the AIS, which you can get for like, I don't know, $600. But for portraiture, even manual focus is fine. So oddly enough, in this case, even the manual focus 300 millimeter 2.8 is about far better a value than is the AFD version, even though they have both the same optically. It's like, yeah, well, one's autofocus, even though it's really noisy and slow. It's like, yeah, but you're paying $400 more for something you don't need. I mean, both of them are insanely slow. One's manual focus, and the other one's insanely slow. You're going to use it for portraiture. Do you need autofocus? No, you don't. But the AFI version, you want to avoid in all instances. The AFS version is awesome. It has no VR. It's big and beefy and heavy, but A, it is the pinnacle of Nikon output from Japan. There is no super telephoto lens from Nikon that was made more uh, uh, precisely and beefier, which, of course, you know, has something to do with heft and weight, too. All of these lenses are ultimately fragile. There's just no denying that. But, I mean, it's the beefiest and it's heaviest. It's the toughest. It's also the best optics where attention to detail is at the pinnacle for Nikon. Everything else, well, better, you know, having VR, more lightweight. Yeah, the quality. Even though it's still really high and the lenses are really, really expensive, this is pinnacle quality from Nikon, the AFS version. It's not my opinion. It's a damn fact. Um, best optics, best attention to detail and manufacturing. VR1 and VR2. Excellent idea for 300 millimeter because this lens, while well, heavy, even in the VR1 and VR2 version, which I have also, I've got three versions currently of the 300 millimeter 2.8. It's hand holdable. So VR, yeah, wonderful. 400, still yes, but not so much. Why am I not worried about my 600 millimeter f4 coming that has no VR on it? Because that lens is so insanely heavy, it doesn't matter whether it's three pounds less and it's the new version, which there's thirteen thousand dollars. That lens is useless. Hand <laughs> lens is a. I don't care if you're Schwarzenegger. No, 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 no. You don't handhold that. You could handhold that lens for a couple seconds. Um, the lens is obnoxious. I mean, it's three times the size of this obnoxious beast. Three times, it's actually, a little bit more than three times the size. So that means it's always going to be on a super beefy monopod or in a gimbal head sitting on top of a tripod, in which case, don't need VR. I do need fast autofocus, but since it's an AFS with a true silent wave motor in it, as are all the AFS versions of the 300, 400, 500, 600 millimeter Nikon lens, who gives a crap? So, 
Logically, let me tell you what is the case on that really, really inexpensive. By the way, I got the lens for 3,000 bucks. I borrowed the money to get it, but there's no way I'm gonna pass up $3,000 on that incredibly awesome lens that I've wanted my entire life. I'll pay on it. $3,000 is, you know, I have it paid off within a, I don't know, half a year. I'll never come across a lens in that good a shape like that for $3,000. Um, don't need VR. So $13,000 versus $3,000, that means that the newer 600mm f4, which is lighter weight, which is nice, is not made as tough or as fine of attention to detail. And I even got sample pics. The guy I got the lens from, I said, you know, send me some sample pics. Wide open. Lens is sharp as hell. <laughs> so sharp. Don't need it. So would I pay $10,000 to think about this for a second? Okay, let's use logic and what I know about lenses, which is a lot. Would I pay $10,000 for vibration reduction on a lens that can't be handheld? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> let's see, $10,000 more for vibration reduction. Uh, let's do the logic of that. No. The lens is too heavy. We're not talking about 300 millimeter, two way. I mean, I can, I ha, I'm, my arms are all fat. There's no muscle on my arms, but I can still handhold this heavy lens quite a long time before I got to put it down. Or put it down at my side, so to say. 600 millimeter, no way in hell. Not me, not you, not anybody. Why do I need VR for that? I don't. <laughs> would I pay $10,000 for a VR version? I don't know. No, no, I wouldn't. Right now, there's a used version. The new one's $13,000. Right now, there's a used version like new for nearly $11,000. Oh, wow, it's $2,000 off. My point being is that the AFS for 300, 400, 500, and 600 millimeters is absolutely the best value. Not my opinion, it's a fact. I've owned every version. I still own nearly every version of this lens. I own the manual focus version of this lens, the 300mm AIS 2.8. I own the AFS that's in my hand. I own the VR version. It's in the back room there. I made a video just a few months ago about it. Now, I've owned the AFD. I've owned several versions of the AFD. Technically, this is a D-series. It even says right there, D-series, but I mean the actual D-series. This... You see there's no screw slot on the back of this. It's actually internally driven via power from the camera. Um, that lens is actually a mechanically autofocus driven lens. That lens, by the way, and the AFI uh, are the, is the big reason back in the 80s when people switched to Canon because people were like, Nikon, these lenses are optically awesome, but the autofocus sucks. You know how bad a screw drive lens is. It's mechanically driven. How bad do you think a screw drive lens is on a huge S lens like this? It's not so good. The AF5 version was not really hardly an improvement. And that's when people said, screw you Nikon, I'm going to Canon. There's a historical fact for you, by the way. It's like, why, is, why are all these people on the sidelines of sports action uh, wildlife uh, using Canon lenses? Well, A, they're much more lightweight, which is true. But it's because Nikon really screwed the pooch back in the late 80s and early 90s. Oh yeah, well in the 90s, all the 90s really. That's when I was going to photography school. I remember those back the, those days back in the day. I switched into Canon. These really expensive Nikon AFD and AFI lenses are not fast. And they were right. Everybody was going shoop over from Nikon to Canon. So no to the AFD, no to the AFI, because there's no damn parts if the motor breaks. And uh, if you have all the money in the world, go ahead and buy the VR versions. Go ahead and do it. Amazingly enough, like I said, optically, the old lenses are absolutely as good as the new lenses. Optically, there isn't a piss worth of, di piss worth of difference between any of them. Except for the 600, I'd actually also specifically like to add that the 600 millimeter is a 16 element, whereas my version, the AFS version, which it looks exactly like this except three times as big, <laughs> is a 10 element lens so this is the best most accurate video synopsis of what the hell to buy when it comes to super telephoto nikkor lenses in the 300 400 500 and 600 millimeter class either you have all the money in the world and you buy a vr version or you get an afs version they look just like this and never ever ever buy ever 
no matter what the cost, buy an AFI version. Period. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. If you like these videos, click the link below. You can always drop me a buck or two. Tell me Joe off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever tickles your pickle. Do svidanja. Hasta luego. Uvidimsia. Paka. And uh, aloha, bitches. Ha, ha, ha.